Hey there. Did you know Baker's always gives you savings and rewards on top of our lower than low prices? And when you download the Baker's app, you'll enjoy over $500 in savings every week with digital coupons. And don't forget fuel points to help you save up to $1 per gallon at the pump. Want to save even more? With a Boost membership, you'll get double fuel points and free delivery. So shop and save big at Baker's today. Baker's, fresh for everyone. Savings may vary by state. Restrictions apply. See site for details. Expressing your love can look many different ways. And with the right jewelry gift from Blue Nile, it can truly sparkle. Blue Nile's collection of classic diamond jewelry makes for the kind of gift that speaks volumes without saying a single word. Or switch things up with a sapphire piece sure to spark conversation. Either way, Blue Nile's diamond guarantee ensures you get the highest quality at the best price. Express yourself with Blue Nile, the original online jeweler, at BlueNile.com. That's BlueNile.com. Today's podcast is taken from a clinic session I moderated with Jeff Munkin at Lawrence First and Gold Clinic. Coach Munkin shares what he calls the plan. And we're going to share part of that with you today. The rest of it is available on CoachTube in the clinic talk that's been put together to benefit Lawrence First and Gold, which again is a foundation that funds pediatric brain tumor research as well as cancer services. And the coaches that were a part of this have just done a great job. Coach Munkin's been a part of the camp. He now was a headliner at the clinic, and he really delivered here in this talk. So in this first part here, he's going to talk about the importance of mental toughness in their program. We feel like we can completely control this, is to try to be the tougher football team. Now, toughness comes in a lot of different, a lot of different ways. Toughness, certainly I think the first thing people think on toughness is, do they hit you hard? Do they knock you off the ball? Uh, do they play a real physical brand of football? I, I hope that people feel that way about us. I hope our, our players identify with a, a very physical, competitive, uh, even combative uh, personality with, within our football program. I, I want our guys to be tough. I want them to be able to knock people off the ball. I want them to, to hit hard and, and, and tackle and block with a lot of force. But that's not the toughness that I'm, I'm, I'm necessarily talking about completely. It's very difficult to be a physically tough person or a physically tough team without, without first being mentally tough. So we, we, we try to challenge our players. We put them in positions where there, there's going to be adversity. Uh, we do this throughout the off season. We put them in a lot of competitive situations in, in the weight room, in our workouts in the summer, uh, every day in practice. Uh, things that we do to try to create mental toughness where uh, they, they think things are going their way and all of a sudden we turn the tables and they've got to respond. And we have a, we have a saying around here, don't react, respond. And, and there's a big difference between that. When teams react or when individuals react, they point the finger, they place blame, they hang their head, they, they stop believing. When, when individuals or teams respond, they find a way, they keep believing they're going to win. They, they, they forge their way through the adversity at hand. They handle success and failure the same way with the intent to get better and the intent to improve and try to be their very best the next opportunity that they have to compete, no matter how good it went or how bad it went. So creating mental toughness in our team is really important. Now, the academy itself does some of that for us. This is a, this is a challenging place. The academic rigors, the, the professional standards that are in place here for our students, our, our cadets, our players, uh, they're different than a traditional college. But that alone, I don't feel like completely closes the loop on the mental toughness piece 
that we need. We we've got to put our our players through the as as Todd Spencer, who was an offensive line coach here for for a few years with us, said the furnace of affliction. We got to put them through some tough things. And if you're going to be tough, then you got to go through some tough things. And and so we have an off season program that I think really challenges them. It forces each guy to be accountable. It, the, nothing that we do in the off season is individually led. It's all team based and each individual performance in every workout every day affects the rest of the team through a point system, through a, a do it again. Uh, that wasn't good enough. We're going to do it all over again type philosophy. And, uh, and so to be the tougher football team puts us in position when we're in a ball game, things are really going our way that we're not, we're not wearing ourselves out, patting ourselves on the back. Our guys are looking for another opportunity to go out there and perform better and do better on the next drive and do better on the next play. And if things aren't going our way, then we, we don't hang our heads and point our fingers and, and we, we, we just, we find a way. And uh, so the mental toughness piece is, is a huge part of our building a philosophy and a plan to win. And we could, we could have the best schemes and have the best coaches and the best teachers. But if we don't have a culture where, where toughness is, is at the very foundation of what we do, we're, we're not going to have a, a sustained success. We might win some games, but we're not going to be a great program. We could be a good team, but we're not going to have a great program. And, and we're striving to have a great program. So that's the number one thing, is to be the tougher team. We, we feel like, in, in talking about that, each one of our players is responsible for their own mental toughness. We are responsible as coaches to help them get to that point where they can be as, as tough as they possibly can. And nobody else controls that. Our opponent doesn't control that. The officials, the weather, the fans, nobody else controls our mental toughness. Coach really keeps his plan simple and focused on things that they're able to control as both players and coaches. And the next part is being fundamentally sound. The second thing is to be the most fundamentally sound team. We spend an inordinate amount of time as a staff teaching the fundamentals. Again, I don't think that a team with great schemes can, can execute those schemes effectively without being really well taught and, and really well conditioned to practice the fundamentals in, in a competitive situation. So whether you throw the ball every down, pass the ball every down, or pass the ball every down, run the ball every down, uh, mix uh, of both of those. If you're a, an odd front defense, an even front defense, you're a pressure team, you're a man team, you're a zone team, Regardless of what your philosophy is in terms of, of scheme, the fundamentals that go, go along with, with each individual player's jobs is the most important thing. And, and we want to be the best blocking team in America as an offense. And we want to be the best team in America at block destruction. If we can do those things, better than anybody else in the country, then we're going to be successful no matter what we do. We, we choose what we do offensively and defensively, and that's based on our personnel, and it's based on, on the entire philosophy of how to win football games, the art of winning a football game at Army. And, and so we have our chosen schemes, but this plan doesn't pertain to just our offense or our defense. This plan is a plan that can be implemented and it's a plan that I would use regardless of what team I was coaching, what offense or defensive philosophy we had, what sport I was coaching for that matter, is, is taking these principles of this plan and, and putting them into place in any organization. So being fundamentally sound, being really good at the things that you're responsible for doing to make the whole plan or the whole scheme come together. And, and the, the, 
the really amazing thing about football is that we've got young men on our teams and, and young ladies for some of us that, that, that play this sport that their, their job descriptions and their skill sets are so different. And, and we as coaches have to be able to teach the fundamentals that go with each, other, each one of those positions to help them do their job. We practice blocking every day. As an offense, we have drills that we do. We start practice. We start our offensive practice with blocking drills. On defense, we practice our, our, our fundamentals of block destruction every day, whether we're going against a body or it's a, a, a big orange ball or it's a bag. We're, we're working blocking, block destruction fundamentals. In the kicking game, we practice blocking in the open field. We pl- practice block destruction on kickoff coverage or punt coverage. Those fundamentals are the things that are going to get us the results that we want. Everybody's got good schemes. Every one of the coaches that's, that's, that's talked to you this weekend has, has great schemes that they're capable of teaching. All the coaches that have, have logged on and are listening have great schemes. It's really difficult to out-scheme people, uh, but it's almost impossible without being able to, to do a good job coaching the fundamentals and using those, fun, those fundamentals to help you execute your scheme. So we have fundamental time every day. As soon as we break from flex uh, and, and our stretch, and we go through a, a traditional stretch routine, I like that. I like the energy that can be created there. I like the accountability piece. Uh, and that our entire football program is together to do something physical that day. And so all our coaches are involved in flex and we're interactive and tossing balls to those guys when they're doing their dynamic warm up. Uh, but as soon as we break from that, we go straight to special teams fundamentals. So we, we practice special teams every day, um, but we practice special teams fundamentals daily to start. So we'll practice blocking kicks. We'll practice covering kicks, uh, defeating blocks on kick coverage, double team blocks on, on kickoff returns. Um, the, the fundamentals of our, for our defensive players of uh, field goal PAT, alignment and, and, and blocking kicks. So each piece of our special teams, even we break it down into individual time. We, we have, days uh, once about every three weeks or so where we practice recovering onside kicks. And, and typically people will practice their hands team. They'll put their hands team out there and they'll, they'll kick some balls to them. We, we split the entire team up, those that are, that are skilled players with our specialists, and we kick onside kicks to them. So very detailed in, in how we practice fundamentals. But being the most fundamentally sound team, you're the best blocking team, the best team at, at destroying blocks, taking care of the ball and getting the ball away. We, we practice uh, a, a strip circuit, uh, a turnover circuit, both in practice and in pregame. It's part of our pregame ritual on the field with all of our defensive players that are dressed out for the game. We do a blocking drill on the field as part of our, our pregame ritual at Army. So th- we even carry the fundamentals into game day and, and our coaches really do a great job of, of coaching those skills. We spend uh, probably as much time on fundamentals and just talking about the little things as we do. In his talk, Coach shares what he identifies as the seven commandments of Army football and those are available on the entire clinic on Coach Tube. The link will be in the show notes. Coach finishes up with two very important things as part of the plan, effort, and don't flinch. Great effort. We want to get our guys to play really, really hard and play the game with great speed and boldness. And that's something we completely control. We challenge our players to play with great effort, give great effort in the weight room, give great effort in the classroom. That helps them learn their assignments. And the final thing is don't flinch. Always believe we're going to win. Never let anything that happens derail us from executing the plan or believing we're going to win, whether it's going good, it's going bad, don't ever flinch. And this is a plan that I think is infallible. If we follow this plan to a T, we can beat any team we play. 
And when we don't win, we can go back and look in the plan and find something that we didn't do effectively that, that cost us from winning. And, and this plan, I believe, is a solid plan no matter what your philosophy is on offense and defense, what level uh, you coach from the NFL all the way down to our youth leagues. This is a plan that works and it's infallible. And, and if we, we execute this, I believe we'll win and our players do too. So there you have it, our quick cast with Army West Point head coach Jeff Munkin and The Plan. Check out all of the courses available on Lawrence First and Goal. Again, those benefit Lawrence First and Goal Foundation. Those are on CoachTube, and the link is in the show notes. Check out all we're doing on Coaching Coordinator at coachingcoordinator.com and follow me on Twitter at Coach K. Grabowski.